Hello, hello everybody, Sanyer, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to talk about Bluebird's FDA approved product by the, of course, the FDA in US approving this therapy from Bluebird that is not CRISPR technology, but that is FDA approved. I want to talk about all of that, of course, in this video. So a couple of notes before I head into today's video. I do want to um, apologize for not making uh, continuous videos uh, this week. Just been busy. Uh, I am in Montreal. I'm in Montreal the whole week, actually, um, since last Friday night. Really, I've been in Montreal. So um, a lot of work here and there, transport. Um, and of course, when you um, when, when you have to do your activities and your daily Errands, you know, it gets it gets very hard to have a consist consistent schedule, especially when you're not at your, you know, your usual home, right? So, um, beautiful city, Montreal, like always. Uh, during the summertime, I love it. Winter, uh, get me anywhere else than Montreal or any of these uh, cities in Canada. Uh, I'm sure you can find at least a city that has moderate weather. But anyways, that is beside the point. We're going off topic here. I do want to bring back here the attention on this article that was published on the 17th of August. That is, of course, yesterday. Bloomberg 2.8 million gene therapy becomes the most expensive drug after U.S. approval, right? So I think this is really the headline. I actually wanted to focus on something else, but that's the headline. $2.8 million genome editing, uh, genome therapy, sorry, not editing. It's, it's mentioned genome therapy. There's a difference becomes most expensive, okay? So uh, we look at the FDA, basically said on Wednesday, they're gonna approve for Bluebird, a gene therapy for patients with a rare disorder requiring bl regular blood transfusion. And the drug maker priced it at a record of 2.8 million. So that means if any individual in this group of, uh, of individuals that, uh, patients that have this uh, disease that we're obviously gonna be uh, talking about, beta thalassemia, Basically, you have to pay 2.8 million. Now, obviously, look, I'm not an American. I don't know all the details behind it, um, but everybody knows that um, insurance plays a part here. Uh, but you know, besides the whole part of that, you know, if you just remove all of that, like just 2.8 million dollars is just mind-boggling, right? It is mind-boggling. If you take a look at this article, it says the sickest patient is estimated to be up to 1,500. Uh, I don't know why they only said sickest patients. Um, okay, you should just put people with beta thalassemia as a number. I think that would be a lot more alarming than 1,500 for, I don't know, that's just my opinion. Um, the therapy is to be, brand, uh, to be branded as Zinteglo. So that's how they're calling it, Zinteglo. That's a weird name. Is expected to face resistance from insurance due to its steep price. That's what I was mentioning. Uh, that's a big topic. Insurers, you know, they're, they're going to pay these uh, therapies and these, uh, you know, products, drugs and so on. But uh, they want to have a fair price, right? Because these companies, you know, they're pricing things at a record high. But again, inflation and so on, I don't know what to say anymore, right? For instance, Novartis, which is actually involving CRISPR partnership with NTLA, in 2019 was off forced to offer discounts. Um outcome-based installment payments for its 2.1 million therapy, Zolgesma, another weird name, after insurers bulk added drugs. So it looks like insurers do have an impact on drugs price. I just find it funny that it takes insurers, big companies, big insurance companies that make a shit ton of money, right, um, to actually force these changes on drug price. You know, it's not like, you know, someone complaining on the street or someone, you know, an average middle class there. Uh, or even lower class income. It doesn't mean matter what class you are, right? You have this disease, you need to be treated. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, these transfusions are expensive to everybody in society, right? Forget about the hospital, just the inv individual just focusing on the other. I'm talking about just focus on the whole community, the society, and just governments as a whole, right? How would world the world be better if you had these diseases that could be cured, that are offered at a reasonable, moderate price, 
uh, and of course paid by insurers, paid by governments, paid by taxpayers, because ultimately you want everybody to live in a healthy society so that you can actually progress more, have more engineers, more artists, more musicians, and so on. I mean, it just to me, it just makes sense, right? Okay, so the average cost of transfusion over lifetime can be six point four million dollars. So we feel the prices we can still bring a fitness. Okay, so that's their argument, but I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna be start I'm not gonna start comparing, you know, the legacy way of it's not even cure, you know, transfusions are not curing anything. These are just maintaining something. It's not curing, it's maintenance, right? It's, there's a difference between solving a problem and then putting a bandage on the problem. These are two different you know, two different act, set of actions, right? Potentially up to 80% of that payment will be reimbursed if a payment does not achieve transfusion independence. Wow. Okay. No revenue, however, expected from the therapy in 2022 as a treatment cycle would take an average of 70 to 90 days from initial. So this is actually interesting. So it looks like although they've had FDA approved they still won't have any sort of revenue in 2022. So we are in the eighth month of 2022, we're in August. So that means they're going to go through this in September, October, November, December. They're going to, you know, recruit and then, you know, you go through the process of selling these this therapy, right? Um, and they still wouldn't get a single cent because the treatment cycle would take an average 70 to 90 days. That's really interesting. I don't know how we can translate that to, uh, to CRISPR, um, but you know, if 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 based on the statement alone, that means if CRISPR therapeutics potentially gets FDA approved by the early part Q1 of 2023, right? By that logic, I think they won't have revenue until maybe the summertime, right? Yeah. So if you do March at worst, March April, so that's May. June, July, so around July, August, maybe they can make some sort of revenue, maybe even September, but it's still in the plans to have some sort of revenue in 2023. That's what I'm getting at. So that's an interesting way of looking at it. I never really posed it. I never did that exercise in my mind. But anyways, you know, to end this video here, I do want to mention, um, and I don't really have a dog in the race here. Um, to me, Bluebird technology meets legacy technology. They got a unanimous approval from the FDA a few months ago. We saw that unanimous support, I should say. Today, it looks like they got support and uh, approval, right? I don't know if it was unanimous, but they definitely got approval from the FDA, which means Bluebird can go ahead and sell this $2.8 million genome therapy, which is the most expensive drug after US approval. This is very important. Um, because you need to look at this with very close eyes because CRISPR is right behind it. CRISPR technology as a whole, uh, CRISPR therapeutics is obviously right behind this company. And in my opinion, what they're doing with CTX001 or now known as uh, Hexacell, I think it's noble, it's noble, it's way better than Bluebird's technology. And I'm going to take a guess, it's going to be a lot less than $2.8 million. Um, and it's going to take a lot less time to be making some revenue. That's my opinion. Hope you guys appreciate this video. I am going to end this video like this. So again, guys, expect some continuous videos here and there. Um, I'll be back in Toronto in, by Sunday, hopefully, this weekend. So obviously, we'll be in our regular schedule by then. But for now, do like our video. Subscribe if you're not. And I hope you appreciate this video. Have a beautiful, beautiful Thursday.